All right, today I got this shark steaming scrub uh, that was gifted to me because uh, it's not steaming. So, of course, I wanted to check it out because I wanted to see if I could fix it. So the first thing you want to do, well, the first thing I needed to do was see exactly what's happening. So I plugged it in and this thing has power, as you can see, and everything works properly. Um, it's just, there's only a little bit of steam coming out. So. The first thing you should do, if you have something like this, is if you have a problem with one of these, is turn it on, and then you gotta you gotta uh, uh, rotate this back so that it activates uh, uh, the actual motors. So check this out. Okay, so I just leaned it back, and I can feel right here that it's getting pretty hot. So it's actually getting really hot. It's actually really hot and there's a little bit of heat coming out of here, but not that much. So most likely what that means is there's a clog right here. It's just a simple clog. So it has power, everything's rotating. It's getting really hot, really hot. And I can actually feel a little bit of heat coming out here. So there's something clogged in here. Um, so that should be a si simple fix. The first thing I'm gonna do is power it off and take these screws off and open this up and see what we got down here, see if there's anything, anything plugged up. All right, so I'm gonna start with these 10 screws right here. I'm not gonna worry about this one yet. I might have to pull that one out, I'm not sure. But let me start with these and try to figure out what kind of screw it is. Okay, so it looks like it's a size seven, and I don't even know what you call these. It's like a little bit with a hole in the middle. You can see these screws have a little pin. So you need one of these keys with like a little hole in the middle. It's a size seven. All right, it's a, it's a Torx T10, Torx T10. All right, so to get all the screws, I just use a, a Torx T10 and an extension um, with my driver and got them all loose. So now we just gotta pop this bad boy up and you can see it's already coming out right here. And just remember, this was hot, so just be careful, be mindful of that. And we just gotta pry this up. And one more screw there. So take this one out so I think this holds this in. Take this out so that this, this portion come off. So let's get in there too. Okay, so I was able to pry this up easily, but this end is getting stuck. So uh, I took this screw out. Actually, I actually didn't take the whole screw out. I gotta pull the screw out. It's still in there. I think once I pull it out, this will slide out. This thing is a pain in the ass. Okay. So, in order to take, take this off, the back cover off, you gotta take this handle out. Take the handle out, there's a hole back here. You stick a screwdriver in there and you're, look, and you're pushing on this button right here. So as you're pushing down, pull out on the handle, handle comes out, okay? Next. Pain in the ass. Now you gotta take this off. Once you take that screw off, now you literally just gotta yank this bad boy off yank it off as hard as you can boom because there's a clip right there that's grabbing back here so it's grabbing that little hole so you just gotta yank on this just pull the back boom and now the final two screws there and you should be able to take that back cover off all right, so I turned this on just because I'm curious. I want to see what it's doing. And I did notice that there's a like a little fan, like there's a little motor here that spits out all the uh, steam. So if you look in there, you see the little impeller spinning around. And so that's where our steam should be getting spit out from. Uh, and then this is the hose right here coming out of this little heating element. Um, Where our water is coming from, or our steam. So, I gotta trace that real quick. Okay, so it looks like this hose is the output to this guy here. Here's the heating element. This son of a bitch is hot. So, it looks like this guy's a little motor, and this is where our, this is connected to our, our tank. 
So this is the what's pumping the water up. So this is pumping the water up through this little motor, this little pump here. It's pushing it through here, pushing it back out. Everything's working. I didn't I don't hear this thing going off at all. So I don't hear this motor working one bit. And I'm really curious. I'm gonna take this off. I wanna take this off so I can see what that if that thing's sitting down there properly. And to confirm that that's where the water is coming from. I'm almost positive that's where the water is coming from. Let me see. And I think this thing isn't working. So I gotta, I gotta confirm that real quick. I wonder if it's supposed to be making a noise. You would think it would. You would think you'd hear this thing pumping something, right? So. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check for power on these two plugs here. It says that this is a 120 volt motor. So I'm gonna check the voltage on those, those pins right there and then see if I got 120 going there. Okay, so this is 120 volts AC and I'm getting 30 volts AC. So if that is a little motor, it's not getting enough voltage to pump. And so as you can see, I just put these little needle leads on there. So most likely what's happening is this pump is not getting the voltage. I think the, I think the motor's good. And if we trace those wires, am I red and blue? It's going right here. So let's see what we got in here now. I'm gonna turn the power off. Okay, so unfortunately for us, this is all sealed. So I can't see what's inside. However, there is a part number on here. So I'm gonna look this up and confirm what the output should be and see if this thing is operating properly. All right, couldn't find the diagrams online, but basically what I realized is this is clearly the power supply to the motor here, because you see the red and blue lines, they go directly into here. And then the brown and black lines, they go out to these butt connectors and then they run over here to run these motors so this is this is the brains of the operation it's power and everything and I'm willing to bet that it's powering this but this motor is bad there's pump so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these leads off and then check the voltage on the leads without it being connected to the motor because sometimes if these are bad you're not gonna get a good read on there so I'm gonna pull these off and, can, and test the voltage with the leads all right so I got it disconnected and now there's only 16 volts AC that's not good. So I'm gonna try to take this, this little pump off see what's going on. Motion Okay, so this guy has a little pump. It's a pump that ain't pumping. So as you can see, there's a the water, it's dirty. This was on there, face down like this. And this thing turns on, it pumps up the water, shoots it through, shoots it through here, but this thing isn't pumping. So I'm gonna turn it on real quick. I, you know, I wanna see what it does. With, with it in this state. All right, this pump is doing nothing. So this is the issue right here. So now the question is, is it because of this power supply? Or is it just because the motor is bad? Because everything else is working on this. This thing is getting hotter than a sun bitch. These are all working, this fan's working down here. So everything in this little transformer slash circuit taking the 120 input and converting it to everything that it needs it to be converted to actually it doesn't even have to get converted this is 120 so this is working these are working this little motor back here is working and the only guy that's not working is this pump so what are the odds that only one output on this thing went bad So we got 32 volts now. Let me turn this on. Okay, so I took this apart. This is not a pump. All this is is a little valve. This is a valve. And what happens is, focus on it. This is the valve, and this slides over it. And then what happens is when you turn it on, voltage goes here this gets magnetized it opens up this little port inside of here and the water goes through 
because this is not a pump. This is literally just a coil. So it's a coil, electricity flows through it, gets magnetic. Inside here there's like a little valve that gets moved with the magnetism. Opens up this, the water shoots through it, and watch this, it's gravity fed, there's no pump, watch. Once you put this on there, if you stand this up, water comes gushing out, watch. So once you, look at see that? So that means, once you stand this up, all the water pressure is shooting up this way. The water pressure is sitting here, in this port, waiting for this to magnetize, open up the valve and the water goes through. Because if you try to blow in here, nothing comes through. If you suck, a little bit. But that's because there's a valve in here that activates when this magnetize, magnetizes. So, yeah, I don't think this is bad. I checked the uh, ohms on it. There's continuity on here, it's not open, so this coil is still good. All right, I was thinking about this and it occurred to me that maybe this thing might just be dirty. Maybe there may be, because we have hard water where I live, and I got this from one of my neighbors. So what if this is just plugged up with the water deposit? So I took it all apart, took this out, and I'm actually gonna dip it in some CLR. Uh, I'm just gonna dip it in there and let it clean it out. But first, I'm actually gonna open this up uh, I'm gonna take this apart from here and see if maybe it's dirty on the inside. I'm really curious now. All right, so I twisted it apart. It's really easy to do. It looks like there's a spring in here. It's like a little little ball in here to plug up the uh, the port. And then I have these pieces, and this looks clean. Another piece inside of here. Let's see. So we got a spring in here. Yeah, so this is definitely. Let's see. I gotta think about this. I'm not 100% sure how this works, but it looks like basically this little ball here, as you can see, a spring loader, and it plugs this up, but the water can't go through. So the water can't flow through. And then when you magnetize it, I think it pulls on this, pulls this down so that the water can go through. So I gotta, I gotta look into this a little bit more, but so far it looks clean. Okay, so in order, in order to test this, I'm pulling 120 straight from an outlet. I got an old uh, lamp that I had, I just got the cord. And I ran one line through 0.5 amp fuse the switch and then the return is going to go through the other line so I had to switch uh, meters because my other one wasn't working on it, right so now I'm going to put this on 200 volts AC I'm going to plug this bad boy in first test to make sure I got the voltage and then I'm going to plug it then I'm going to give this bad boy 120 volts fused of course and see if this thing changes states all right, here we go. Switch on. Got 120. So now I'm gonna turn this off. A little more voltage. I'm gonna plug it in here. Stand back and flip the switch and see if uh, this thing changes states. All right, here we go. Am I afraid? Yes, I am. Boom. You can hear it working. So I think it's buzzing cousin and I lost a little clip the clip went flying so I gotta find it but this thing seems to be working once it gets to 120 you can hear it changing state so uh, the only thing that, the only problem was that this thing was vibrating so I wasn't able to get to test it properly so let me find the clip all right it looks like it's that little plunger that's right in here you can feel it you plug it in it's just like right here 
little spring loaded plunger. You can't tell, but. I know some old bitches going crazy. I'm gonna try swapping it around, see if maybe I did put it in backwards. Alright, well, this thing is steaming now. I can still feel this moving. I had the plunger upside down. A little spring with the ball upside down. And you can still feel this thing kind of like vibrating a little bit. But, I got steam coming out. I got a lot of water too. I wonder if there should be more steam than water. Look at that. Like water, large water droplets come out. But, I mean, it's working now. But now I just think there's too much water coming through. I don't know. It's working though. I don't know if it was a 120 jolt to the system that got it working, or me just taking it apart, cleaning it. But it's working now. Look at that steam. So, fixed it. All right, so this bad boy is steaming like crazy. You can see the steam coming out of here. This is pumping, the water's pumping through. Um, this is really hot. So it looks like the fix was taking this thing apart, taking the actual pump apart and cleaning it out. Um, I didn't put it in CLR, but I just cleaned it by hand, blew it out and then it started, it started operating properly. Um, so I guess that was it. Just needed, just needed to get cleaned up. And moving forward, I'm just gonna use uh, purified water. I'm not gonna use the hard water that comes out of the uh, sink, but that's it. All right, put this back together. Just make sure that this is laying down flat and you see those two blue tabs in there. So this is laying down flat. Go ahead and put this cover back on. And just, there's no real special way. Just put it back on. And then you're going to put the screws on. And then don't forget these two screws back here. All right, once you got the cover back on, you got all these uh, screws on there. Don't forget these two. Boom, boom. Put this back on. It's going to snap in. So one more screw up on top there. Don't screw. Okay, once that's tight, just slide this bad boy in. Until you hear a click, click, and that's it. Now we're back together. I gotta buy some new pads, and my shark, my brand new shark, or my used shark, is now working.